All right, hello everyone and welcome to another SimSol webinar. My name is Nicole Nies. I'm the Director of Marketing here at SimSol. And I just wanna officially welcome you to our best practices for handling RCBAP claim webinar. So it's no secret that RCBAP claims can seem overwhelming and at times can be very tricky. On like a single family property, you're dealing with multiple units, which means there are plenty of things that can go wrong. In this webinar, we're gonna be providing you best practices for handling these monster claims. First, we're gonna talk about what is an RCBAP. And then we're gonna go into how to create an RCBAP estimate from there, we're gonna go and talking about how to create a proper evaluation. That's where you'll be able to see as far as what the penalties there is, if they're not. And then from there, determining if there is a penalty, and if there is, we're gonna talk about how to handle that. And then we're gonna finish it up with um, how to create an RCBAT flood form. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Danny. A lot of you guys know him. He's been with us for years. He's a very seasoned adjuster. Um, he's done a lot of RCBAP claims, uh, knows the program, and sent it out. All right, Danny, are you with us? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Danny Sutliff. I'm the Director of Training here at SimSol Software Company. And I'm gonna be going over how to best uh, handle those big RCBAP claims. So the first thing is, what is an RCBAP? What that is, that's the uh, F National Flood Insurance Program policy uh, dealing with residential condos. So there's a couple rules that, they, that you have to adhere to uh, when you're doing these RCBAP policies. SimSol takes advantage of and, and endorses or incorporates those rules in its estimating uh, platform uh, with a couple of specialized forms as well as se setting up the claim as an RCBAP. So when you come up and you select it, it's not a single family, it's an RCBAP. And I want to show you to verify that, it, that this claim is an RCBAP. So on the loss information, when I'm in a claim right now, um, when you're going through the wizard, you're going to select RCBAP claim, but I'm just going to show you that uh, this claim has already been created. So I'm going to come over here to coverages I'm going to make sure that it says flood hyphen condo RC BAP. This is important. So then you can put in, for example, your limits get also very high along with the deductible amounts. Okay, your coverage B is also addressed, but basically when we're dealing with RC BAPs, as far as the forms go, mainly it's dealing with how to assess the penalties and, and setting that all up. So make sure when you do an RCBAP that the type of policy RCBAP is selected, okay? Now there's a couple rules that, uh, that you want to adhere to is that each unit, you need to find out how many units that, that, that are being used within the building. So if you have a 600 unit uh, condo, then, then you need to make sure that you have those units. Um, we can pay for all the common areas uh, other than the units itself. And, and remember that RCBAP is the primary insured. So if you have other units that have building, um, building coverages involved, uh, basically um, some of the agents like to sell, you know, building coverages on an RCBAP. I don't know why they do that, but they do. Your RCBAP policy is primary and that takes precedence over any other policy in force. So make sure that uh, you be aware of that. Another thing is, is that when we compose the penalty, uh, we're gonna take the number of units times 250,000 and then if our uh, I to V value is there or above, uh, then we can, we, it's, we're gonna have no penalty on that. So basically we'll get into that in a little bit later, but just want to make sure that you're, that you're aware of that. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is to create an RCBAP. I've already done this. Um, you want to make sure the first thing is real important when you go into a building estimate, all right, uh, make sure that you have your dwelling and use coverage information selected and tied. Policy contains our C clause is checked, but also if you do not, and I'm going to stress this again, if you do not hit force qualify RCC, guess what? Your forms will not work. So it's very important that you hit the force qualify RCC, okay? Now, 
there's a couple facets of, of making the estimate up. So I'm going to come up here and click on scope of damage. I already have one in here. Look at this monster. We've got a lower parking garage. So we have all the rules for a basement. So make sure that you adhere to that. Um, and we also have an elevator area that is also, also included. Remember that elevators, you can pay for the cab. So you have to check the um, date of elevator construction because you could possibly pay for the equipment if they meet uh, pre or what we call pre-elevator date. So make sure that you, you check that. If not, you can always pay for the cabs all the time, 100%. Your big boiler machining rooms, you know, so when you're doing these large condos, you've got a lot of money in uh, equipment. So make sure that you can get um, your professional estimates from the vendors. And, you know, for example, the elevator company will give that to you, the, any of the boiler machine room company. Electrical is very important and plumbing is important. So uh, just make sure that you address the equipment when you're dealing with, uh, with these, okay? Now, uh, remember, garage elevator pits, you can pay for the pits and pump them out. But remember, you need to check that um, construction date of the elevator. And if it's pre-elevator construction date, then you can pay for all the equipment. If not, uh, you can only pay for the, some of the electrical and pump out of the pits. We have a storage area, concrete walls, any, anything to do with structure within an RC BAP is covered. So, um, so you could have storage room one, two, three. These are all the various different um, structural items that you can use. Um, we also have a, another area in this estimate for your laundry area and stuff. So basically, this is our basement or lower parking garage area. You can get involved with all these different types. So um, also, after you're after the first floor, then all that your standard rules apply, so basement doesn't apply, so you're going to be paying all the common areas and any, uh, any storage area and also any units that are located on the bottom floor, okay? So as you can see, I have the first floor grouped, and that's another thing. When you're preparing your estimate, look how I have the, the group function that's, that's that creates. So for example, the lower parking area here, um, that gives me my group for all the rooms that are, or all the areas that are associated with the lower parking or the basement level. So I have it divided up into lower parking area, elevator area, boiler machine area, storage area and concrete walls, and then I've got a northeast side laundry area. So basically, that would be the, the basement. Then I can, by just using the group function. And so, as you can see, I have the various different um, items that are selected. So as I select this, click on list, these are the items that, that we would be using um, for this type. We have our flood loss cleanup, mill to side, all that uh, popped in there. A lot of it's just cleaning when you're dealing with these parking garages, okay? And then also the restoration portion of it as well. Um, so anyways, you need to, to follow the rules of the NFIP dealing with basements and garages and underground garages. Uh, we then come into our floor area. You know, remember our common areas are all covered uh, under the RC BAP and it's common. So that'll be your storefront. Remember the restriction, you know, you have to have 75% uh, of units of square footages to apply for an RC BAP. So you could have up to almost like 24.9% uh, in common floor areas that, that are, that's not the unit. So please be aware of that. Okay, so you can see that this first floor got nailed. Most RC BAPs uh, will be a parking garage and then possibly the first floor. That's usually what your claim is going to be. Remember that a RC BAP does not have any detached garages. If it's a detached garage, they must have their own policy. It's not like a, uh, a dwelling policy. Or a and the same as goes for as commercial as well. So make sure 
that your uh, your groups are all in there. As you can see, I have the hallway, the elevator lobby. I've got the northeast corner. As you can see, this is a quite large estimate. I even have on the exteriors for pressure washing or addressing any damaged building items that are foundation that are on, on the structure. So make sure that your estimate is um, labeled correctly and in order and so it is logical when you read this okay so as you can see it gets quite large with our settings here so I have a four hundred five thousand dollar estimate on the replacement cost so you just work your estimate and use that group a lot of people like to use the copy copy clone option for duplicating areas like storage one to storage two if it was the same scope so please take advantage of that before I leave this before I leave on going to something different here I would like to stress when we are doing the estimate you could use a global function and that's really important with a room with a lot of areas so that I could come up here to the global as I as I launch this I can then come up into my you know, let's say for example my wall items and if I see drywall taped and floated I can actually take it go to scope number three say oh my DB unit cost will now be two hundred and fifty two dollars and fifty cents so as I click on that two point five zero I'm just gonna update that real easy and select it and now click OK as you can see that um, it automatically took that change very easily. So what you can do, a little trick for you, is do your estimate. As soon as you're done and you're kind of massaging, massaging it a little bit, then you could use the, go into global to actually make all those changes very easily, okay? So as you can see, we've got a very large estimate here and um, make sure that, uh, when I was in the global, by the way, I'm gonna go back in for just a second. I wanted to show you this. So if I'm in here and I select an item, if you need to change the RC value, let's say it's not recoverable, you want to take it for recoverable price, you can do so, but the wizard, when you select this, will make everything full replacement cost except for appliances and carpeting, okay? So make sure that that's select. If you do have to rechange it, you might have to redo your whole estimate because the coverage is, or, come back using global, find the line item, like for example, if I go to carpeting, let's see if I have any carpeting right here, carpeting per square foot, click on scope number two, and if this, if this was done at full replacement cost, I can instantly rip through the estimate off the RC depreciation and mark it as non-recoverable. Okay, so you can see it was already set to non-recoverable, that's why I have that one penny. So I can click on done there, and that's in, that's a little trick for you. Uh, so if you have to change the recoverable status off of an individual item, so if I click on done, we return back. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to be talking about on there is how to create the uh, evaluation of the of the estimate. This is very important. Because when you do your evaluation, you want to use our evaluation process uh, we have in SimSol. So I'm going to come over here and select uh, the actual the ev evaluation of it right over here. Select this. That's just giving me that it's an older estimate. So as I do this, I'm going to click on it, make sure I've got my um, structure on here. It's already been done, but you want to make sure that your evaluation is within 80%. We're going to go check it in just a second, but make sure that the evaluation is higher than your estimate of your RCV and ACV. That's very important for you to do because if you don't do that, then they will kick back your files. So make sure that your evaluation, whatever this is, is larger than your estimate. Normally, it would be when you're dealing with RC VAPs. Okay, so make sure you get your evaluation complete. But the next thing that we need to do is tie that, and and we have to make sure that we have an insured to value. So remember what I said: include this estimate in all forms. Policy contains our C clause. To activate forms that we're going to be using in the policy is going to be force qualify RCC. 
So as I do that, I click it, and I'm now going to tie that estimate or that evaluation to the estimate. So I'm going to click on building our CV. There is my total square footage on that with per unit. Multiply that in, cost per square foot is $184. There's my 42. So as you can see, as I do this, my force qualify is already on because remember, RC BAP is full re replacement cost at all times. RC BAP is full replacement cost at all times. But I'm just checking to see if there was any penalty, and there isn't on this one. So as you do force qualify RCC, make sure that that is checked. Doesn't matter if you if there it'll tell you what the coinsurance penalty is or not. But when you do the forms, we need to make sure that that's checked. So as we do this, we have all our rooms. We have 15. This is a 15 level uh, structure. Our rooms are 315, and then we have our baths and such. Okay. So as I do this, I click on done. And now, once I have my estimate completed and my evaluation completed, okay, um, it's very easy to do the evaluations. You want to just use RC BAP Condo. Uh, excuse me. Uh, you want to use the, um, it's, it's called the multifamily uh, tab on the evaluation and then select uh, multi-story. So you would you do that and put the square footage in, and it does it by unit, by, by the way. Okay, and I'll, I'll print that out for you so you can see an example. Okay, let's just do that right now. I'm gonna click on print, and I'm gonna take the evaluation report, and then I'm gonna select that over, and so you can see that. Okay, so as you can see, that here's my evaluation. So I've got my foundation walls, and it's a 15-story building built in 1964. I put an economic age of 45 on it. The average area is 928 per square foot for each unit. That's an average. Now, normally, you know, they have different, different uh, calculations per unit. Um, what you're going to have to do is just take an average of all that, and that's how you're going to do your evaluation. Okay, so once we put that in, this is what this is what we come up with the evaluation. I did a, co a component adjustment factor at the time of this loss because of you know of of the valuation of three percent. So I increased all these prices by three percent in my evaluation. Here's the building valuation report for handling the garages as a separate uh, item. Okay, so it's not part of the, really not part of the main foundation structure, but it's an, it's it's considered an add-on. And your building systems and equipment. Remember, in an evaluation, um, that the the you have to address the HVAC boilers and everything separately, as you see it right here, because no foundation, no model can know what equipment is in there. So you just have to put that in separately. Here we go, here's our, here's our figures for that re replacement cost. And so the, it's 59,094,123,34. There is the per square footage depreciation. So that works out real well. I'm gonna click on done to get out of that. And that would be my evaluation for, for the estimate. Once I have the evaluation and it's tied to the estimate, I'm now ready to actually go and check and see how to apply these uh, amounts or these figures uh, to the final report and the proof of loss, okay? So what I'm gonna do to help me with that is that I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna go to the forms, I'm gonna right click on forms and go to new. From this, I'm looking for the RC BAP. There's an RC BAP final report, an RC BAP proof of loss, and we have an RC BAP penalty worksheet. So we want to explore that penalty worksheet. So if I come over here and click on penalty worksheet, click on done, this is kind of like an automatic. It brings up all these figures based upon your estimate and the evaluation. All I would need to do is come into form wizard. Now remember, force qualify, 
must be selected in order for this form to work. Okay, so come up here and click on form wizard. Select it, so here's my limit of liability. My coinsurance is 80%, my deductible is $500, so you wouldn't have to do anything on that. So on here, the replacement cost is 53 million actual cash value. Now what you need to do on section B2 is check this, because uh, there are three different conditions, but I think we've already met the first condition on this estimate, and then I'm gonna show you how we can um, apply it to the second condition and then a penalty if needed. I would come up and it's asking me for how many units that I have, okay? So if I have 314, I can select that, and then once I do that, 78.5, click on finish, then I can come up and then select it. Did it? Did the compliance determination uh, go? Yes, it did comply, okay? So I did make that amount, okay? So that gave me, gave me a full replacement cost, um, so I don't have to worry about that. But what if we only had, let's say that, um, I only had uh, maybe 75 units or something. Then when I multiplied by 250,000, then it would come over here and change the compliance determination. So for example, if I wanna make this not to comply, I'm just gonna come up here and then change it a little bit uh, to make it comply. I mean, make it not comply, excuse me. So I'm gonna come over here to the show claims grid, or excuse me, come up here to loss information. I'm gonna just play with the, the coverages a little bit. Okay, so when I click on the coverage and then there's my building of uh, 52 million, I can say, okay, well, it's within 80% insured to value. Okay, so the value is 52. So if I make this, Ninety-eight million. Click on done. Come over here to the building estimate information window. I'm just checking to see if we have penalty here. Let's go the other way. Here's my fifty-three on the valuation. Ninety-eight. Take that off. Let me come back over here and go to my coverages again and click over cover. There we go. Come over here to building estimate, see if we have a, a penalty here. Yeah, I have a 50% penalty here. So this, so I'm I'm gathering a 50% 50, 50 penalty. So I've got to apply that. So on the force qualify RCC, I'm gonna click on force qualify, which means it makes it turns on the validation of that form. So now when I come over here and I select it, I can then start to do my validation of, of what the penalty is going to be. So here's my valuation form. I know that I have a penalty, okay? And, and so from that um, value of the risk is 53 amount of insurance. I'm gonna refresh with claim data here. And that should automatically come up and take that. Let me just do a new penalty worksheet. Because I have my loss information. New. And come up here to my penalty worksheet, select it. So as you can see right now, um, I do not it, it doesn't comply. It says go to B2, okay? Do you see this compliant determination? So based upon the evaluation, the amount of insurance, it did not apply. So now I'm gonna go over to section B2, which is right here, and now I have to use the wizard. And now, um, if I make the amount on there and I put in the number of units, so I had 314 units. So if I do that, it might apply. It might say, okay, you're good to go there. In this case, when I'm on, when I'm on B2, it does not apply. No coinsurance, uh, it does not apply. 
So that means once I have that, I have a penalty percent of 50.2. If you remember, when I went to SimSol and looked at the I to V, it was 50.2 on the penalty, okay? If it did meet the I to V status, okay, from that, then we don't have to worry about it. We can just say it's full replacement cost and off it goes with no penalty. At this stage, if it, pa it did not pass the two criteria, one, insured value by a standard 80%, that's the first determining factor. The second one is multiplying the number of units by 250,000. In this case, it does, it does not apply. So we still have a penalty and it tells us it's 50%. So how do we take this into account? So here's our, here's our building, here's the required amount of insurance and the limit of, uh, of liability, okay? It does not comply. All right, so the thing is, is we need to come down and it tells us how we determined the loss. So we did that, okay? And so we've got the 404, this is the formula that, that comes up. We divide the limit of liability of 21,156 to 42,518 as required of insurance. That equals 0.5 of loss. The 404, uh, adjusted, now what happens is it goes to an adjusted value, okay, which equals gross RCV loss minus unrecoverable depreciation, which is the 3,000,960, .09 times the penalty, 0 0.502 before the deductible, and equals to a 202.833 copay. So that's our copay that the insured has to uh, use okay is 202 so I'm going to write that down 202 comma 833 all right 0.13 that's your copay that's the penalty that they have to pay okay so how do we how do we adjust that for our final report okay and our proof of loss so what I'm gonna do is the first thing that I do is I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna come over and do a proof of loss for RCBAP, okay? So how we do that is, is we're gonna come up here to forms. We're now gonna right click using our mouse, click on new, and we're looking for the proof of loss RCBAP, which is right here. So as I do that, I come up, and if you come down and scroll down, most of the figures are all in there, except for my penalty, which is right here. Now, the penalty worksheet told me that it is going to be 203-833.13. So as I put that in there, this readjusts the loss and that's what you're going to pay. So it tells the examiner, hey, I have a $500 deductible, but I have a $203,000 coinsurance participation that I need to address. So now that I have that uh, selected, I can then lock this. And I, the reason why I'm locking this is I'm disallowing the changes because I gotta go in and change the deductible to increase. So it's going to be uh, 203 833 uh, 0.13 plus $500 okay so we need to we need to make sure we have that so that's uh, 0.3 there we have 3 we have 3 and we have 12 uh, 13 sorry and that's uh, 213 okay so now that's our, our new figure. So what I'm gonna do here is since I have this lock so my proof is good, I'm now going to use a special form selecting RC proof of loss final. So RC BAP final report. Uh, first before I do that, excuse me, I'm gonna come over here to loss information come to my coverages, and instead of the $500 deductible, this is what's known, when you look at the deductible amount, it's coinsurance with participation. So that's gonna be the 213, 500, 
0.13. So as I do that, I just changed that deductible to reflect the $500 plus the penalty. So as I do that and I select the final report, and it's gonna be called the RCBAP final report, which is right here, click on done. I will then come up and do the wizard on here. So, and then it will, and it'll show up right here. A lot of people don't like to use this one, but the, what they will use is this final report. They really don't need to use the RC one. We just named it that way. But as you can see, when we have the deductible to be, a, to be applied, it, it's, going to, it's going to reflect the $500 plus the penalty. And there's your figures. Okay. And that's how we do a, an RC um, BAP report. So when I click on it, I can then come up here and I can select the RC BAP proof of loss, the final. Um, I'm just going to put the regular final because it has the figures and everything all in there. I can then come up and then I can select the uh, preliminary. As you can see, any advance payments, anything like that, and then I can do the penalty worksheet to pop that up, and then I can select my valuation, which is here, and then you can see all your garage area, floor plan, elevations, your building estimate, any contents estimate is done, and then I have some photos here I'll just show you. So there's some photos. I'm only going to As you can see, it's all been labeled out, but it's a very large estimate. Okay, so you can see it's got quite a bit of photos in here. Let me just put some garage, let me get rid of some of the hallway stuff and just put some exteriors and let me do that real quick. This thing is uh, quite large actually. Okay, so I can come over here and let's put, just put some garage stuff in. Here we've got some temp chillers and vaults and some elevators. Okay, so that's that that works out pretty good here. So I just want to show you printout. So when we do our preview, and our building estimate is quite large actually, and there's some photos. So you can see that our proof of loss. Uh, when we do it, this is what I wanted to show you, is that it tells the examiner, uh, here I have a $500 deductible and here is my participation and there's my proof. That's in this, the, the proof will automatically do the math. And on the same thing here. So it will also track in the RC cover about, coverable amount and the total building claim. Okay, there's our preliminary report. This will be our RC BAP report that gives us all the uh, figures that justify the penalty amount. So remember, there are three different criteria: 80% insured to value. The other one is the number of units times 250,000. So if, if that didn't comply, then we come down to the building number of units. And if that doesn't, then it applies the uh, penalty phase for you. And that's how. And you can take the penalty and place that in the final report. Uh, and the proof of loss. When you do the proof of loss, use the building uh, RC proof of loss so that you can put in the $500 deductible plus the penalty and, so, and then lock it. Okay, and then go, to file, then go up to your loss information coverages and change it for your final. So you'll put in addition to the deductible because remember, it's coinsurance participation. Okay. There's our evaluation. Here's our garage area. As you can see, here we go. Here's a nice large uh, floor plan. So it's, it's, it's really nice. So you can see this right here. It's a 15 story building. And this is done in SimSol. So there we go. It makes it a little bit easier for you to look at. And so you can see that it can get quite detailed and it does get quite detailed on your first floor plan. Then I come up here to the different elevations. 
and there's my there's my estimate lower parking garage and there's like 40 48 pages to this and then here we have some photos here for you to take a look at it so anyways that that would be the claim as you can see they can get you get your outside chillers which are not covered under the NFIP uh, for RC Vaps, here's here's a picture of that building and we're good to go now what I like about this guys is when we remember when I told you on the setup for your estimate we use grouping and that's really important because now take a look at the estimate summary details when we start to do this here it gives me the lower parking garage and it gives me all the rooms that are assigned and it gives me a total of the parking garage with O and P then we can go to the first floor and get a grand total of all the areas individually plus contractor overhead and profit and then we do the exterior separated this really makes a good estimate and a professional looking estimate because now the examiner can come up and take a look at a specific room if they need to and know what the, the amounts are and then in relationship to the other all right so this concludes our webinar thank you so much for attending again if you have any questions for us we're always available our phone number is down there as well as our email thank you so much and everyone hope you have a great afternoon thanks again